Hey everybody, my name is Scott Ellis. Welcome to another Guide You Outdoors video where we guide you to the outdoor lifestyle. Today I want to show you a fun little trick, a little game or a little thing with fire that we're going to play with. Um, playing with fire. Um, and this is a great, I, when I look at fire and I'm teaching people about how to build fire, I look at progressions of how to make fire. Um, and this is kind of a middle ground progression. You know, you could start with a lighter or matches. Um, and a next step before you move to a more, a more complicated one is a flint and steel uh, fire, to make a flint and steel fire. There's some process, there's some steps that go into this, uh, and then there's some different materials that go into this as well. So to start off with, um, to make a flint and steel fire, uh, you need something called char cloth, okay? And char cloth is really, really cool stuff. And I'm gonna make some char cloth for you today and show you how this is all done. And so to make char cloth, you need a pure cotton material. Um, and what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna burn this inside this can and we're gonna remove everything except for pure carbon. We're gonna take that cotton and burn off all the other things that are in it and be left with a pure carbon. And that's an important piece. Now you can make a bunch. If you look in here, I'm actually, I'm gonna experiment. I have two different types of cotton that I'm gonna use. Um, and I'm gonna try to make a bunch of this so I can have this as a resource for a long term. It's not just a one shot deal as far as making carbon. Uh, making char cloth. To do this you need some sort of tin, okay? So I have this, this tin is great. I've been actually using the same tin for a long time. It's an old Altoids tin, the one you can get mints out of, and that's worked great for me. I've made char cloth in it multiple times. But for you guys today, I decided I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do a fresh, brand new char cloth box. I have this very nice tin here, and I've placed this pure cotton material inside, all right? Um, what you need, is a nail. Haha, <laughs> I happen to have a nail. It's like I'm prepared here uh, for this all to work. So you need one small hole in the lid of your tin. So this can be done in many ways, but I'm just gonna take a nail. Sometimes you might need to bang it. Let's see, I got a rock here. And I'm gonna just bang a hole into this nail. Yeah, pretty good. It doesn't have to be huge, but just, you know, a regular tenpenny nail. Um, we'll make a decent hole in there. You don't want your hole too big, but a nice little hole inside of it. If you can see there, I just made a hole in the top of my tin, all right? Now, for this whole process to work, I think it's unique. You need fire in order to make fire. So I have all of my, um, my cotton material in my tin with a hole in it, and now I need to make fire. So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna make fire with a lighter because I don't have any char cloth to use to start it with. And making fire, you know, basic skills with a lighter here. I have lots of really little sticks. These are dry little pine boughs off the ground. Excellent little fire starter. And for me, birch bark is a great material. One of my little tricks I'll do is I'll just take a couple pieces of birch bark here. Don't need a ton. I'll kind of fold them in. So I make like a little bundle like so. And I'm just gonna take my lighter to this. And I like to give fire a little bit of air. It needs fuel, oxygen, and heat to make fire. My birch bark is lighting my small sticks. It's a little smoky, it's been raining lately. And now I'll go to some medium pencil size sticks. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of a fire here in order to make my charcoal. You want to go to a little bit bigger size sticks. You want this fire to burn for a little while. So anything, you know, I would say three fingers thickness to maybe up to wrist would be the maximum size I'll need for a small fire like this. And I'll get this fire going nicely. Great. So here's a closer look at my tin. You can see I just have a nice small little hole right here. An Altoid tin would work just fine. But something completely metal that's tin, all right? Now inside, I have just some little pieces. I like to cut them in about this inch by inch square. One piece of cotton um, in char cloth will be plenty to make one fire. I also tried out this other material. It's more of a canvas material. Jeans can work really well as well. What you really need to make sure of is read the tag. It has to be 100% cotton. If there's any synthetic in there, it will melt and it will destroy your whole kit. So it has to be 100% cotton. Um, any organic fiber actually will work. I've only done it with cotton, but I've heard others will work as well. 
Don't fill your tin too full. You want some air and space in there and make sure it has a nice seal on it. And you're ready now to use this with that little hole on top and make some char cloth. Great, now that my fire's going a little bit better, um, I'm going to cook this, all right? So pretty simply said, and well, normally I like to have my gloves out here. I'm just gonna place that right into the fire. Cook away my little tin. Um, and I may need to feed more wood to this as it goes, depending on how much cotton you put in there. Um, it takes a little bit longer. Um, but my, my time frame is I'll watch this little hole. Eventually, you're gonna see that smoke is gonna start pouring out of that little hole. Um, when it stops pouring smoke, that means your char cloth is done. You can pull it off and let it cool out and then, you know, check it. Oh, there it goes. See, now, if you look closely, the smoke is starting to pour out of my little char cloth tin there. That's me. So one of the, the big important steps of getting the flint and steel fire to work is the flint and the steel. Um, where do you get flint? That's a great question. Um, so I actually have a friend who does some flint napping. And so one time I just went over and he had all these extra shards and I was like, can I have some of those? And I got a whole box of them. Free, you know, actually I gave him some maple syrup. It was a good trade. Um, and he just had these extra pieces that were just break-offs when he was working on making arrowheads and stuff. That's one way to get it. In where I live in Vermont, there's not much flint that naturally occurs around here. It's very common in Europe. Um, it's like super common stone. You, you can get it that way. Um, there are other things that will work besides flint. So there is a, a rock that is really common in the West. One well, say really common, but if you know what you're looking for, it's called chert. The chert works really good. That was uh, the uh, Southwestern native tribes preferred stone to use. Uh, a piece of flint was very valuable to them. Um, they also, you could also use quartz. So if you get a nice piece of quartz, it's a little bit harder, but it will work. Flint's the best, it's my favorite. So that's the one, if I get it, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, and then you also need the steel, okay? So you need a high carbide steel. Um, I've done some kind of research and um, this piece here actually was made from an old bed spring. Uh, that I have a friend who's a little bit of a welder and he pulled together. I've bought some of these before as well. Uh, you can buy them online, Amazon, look up flint and steel kits and stuff like that. Um, but the, the springs of a bed, you know how you have the coil springs? Took some of those and he pounded them together and just made a quick little thing for me. He was like, that was easy. You know what I traded him? maple syrup um, and I got myself a nice striker or flint piece and steel a flint piece and steel piece in order to make sparks this is not easy to just get a spark out of this okay so there there's a couple techniques some people prefer to strike with the striker down onto the flint if you do that you can put your char cloth right on top of the flint and that will work pretty well um, I've done this quite a bit and I've, I've developed a system where I actually strike with the flint down on the steel and the key here is you're gonna really come down hard where you're just gonna graze it, okay? And you're gonna look at your piece of flint for your nice sharpest edge. You're gonna wear this out. It's gonna chip. Sometimes I'll nap off a piece and get a nice sharp edge again um, so that I can get just a little bit of a spark. I'm gonna miss a bunch of times until I, well, there was a little one. Maybe I need a better edge there. There was one, yep. Now you're starting to see those are the sparks that can be the start of your fire. Just those little bit of sparks. So really coming down nice and just grazing that steel so that the flint is actually scraping off a tiny piece of metal, which is igniting as it comes down. So that's your technique to really strike down on this. Uh, I encourage you if there's other techniques, but a nice fluid motion where you just try missing it five times and then nick it. Well, I'm not getting it. There we go. All right, that little spark. That's all you need to get it started if that hits your char cloth. Great, so um, my, uh, my little char cloth tin has been going for about 10 minutes. There's no more smoke coming out of the top. If I had gloves, it's been a nice time to just kind of grab this out, but I'll just use some sticks here. I'm gonna pull that out to the side. And let's let that cool off for a minute. So while we're waiting for this to cool off, Let's talk about who would use a system like this. Who would do a flint and steel fire? You know, we got lighters, we got matches, this is crazy talk. Um, I think it's kind of good as a historical perspective as well. It's like a colonial piece. So um, during the colonial times, matches were actually pretty expensive. 
Fire was a huge part of colonial people's time. Um, and this was their preferred method for making fires for a long period of time because they had flint from their gun stocks. So extra pieces of flint from your um, your gun stocks or your muzzle loader gun stocks where a flint would strike down to ignite it. They would take those extra pieces and they would just carry one around and have a little kit like this um, with a piece of steel that was on it and some char cloth and they can make a fire just about anywhere. Um, it's also kind of like a cool piece of understanding the progression of fire. So we're gonna blow a, a, a coal into a flame um, and that's a really good skill. If you're working towards a bow drill skill set, I suggest starting with this. Um, and if you can master this, then you're kind of ready to go to the next step, which is to learn how to do a bow drill, which is, you know, 10 times more challenging than this system. Um, I found, you know, with flint and steel, as long as it's not raining and really wet, I can get one every time. It may take me a little bit, Bow drill, it's still, I, it's not 100% success rate, just the humidity of the day can change things. So start with one skill that's gonna build up to your other skill, which is this flint and steel, kind of getting a coal, and then bringing that up into another flame. So it's part of our heritage, um, a cool way to make fire, and it's just another fun reason to get outside, which we love to do at Guide You Outdoors. All right, oh, it's cooled off. All right, let's take a look, magic moments. Ah, yes. Look at it, it shrunk down quite a bit. Yeah, um, this is nice stuff here. Let me bring in a closer look. So you can see all of that cotton that we went in there. It's completely black now. Shrinks completely down. This is just pure carbon. Um, and that's all that's left is these nice little carbon pieces in my tin that will take a spark really nicely and get this all set up for making fire. So now that this, uh, the char cloth is all ready to go, key element here also as well, is keeping everything totally dry. I brought out some extra materials here and I actually put them on a piece of bark. I didn't even want these to go on the ground to keep this totally dry. What do I have? I, I like pine cones. I think they're a great little fire starter. Um, I have a little bit of birch bark and then I have my tinder bundle. Let's talk about your tinder bundle really quickly. This material here is actually, um, I don't know, I call it maybe a little bit of a cheat, but for the example of this experiment, I am using the, the best stuff I know. This is called juke fiber. Um, you can get juke string at a hardware store and then just peel it apart into little pieces. Um, it's purely organic material once again. Um, so it's not synthetic at all. And I want it, this just has lots of little ends on it. What else could I use? Oh, I've used a lot of different things. Um, my shelter over here is made, the cover's made out of ash. I find the inner part of the ash, I can peel off little pieces of that and it's actually dry in my shelter. Uh, that works really well. Uh, grapevine bark works really well. Uh, cedar bark works really well. Uh, cattails, if you take the tops of cattails, that fluffy material works really well. Also in my shelter, I used a reed called common reed or Phragmites, and it has these little poofy tops. That works really well. As long as it's really dry, really organic, and lots of little pores and fibers, this is gonna work pretty nicely. Some people will even go find like an old animal nest or something like that to make their tinder bundle. This is the best, the juke fiber. I find this is just super successful. And I make just a little nest out of this and I prepare this ahead and I keep it totally dry. I have sticks, I have birch bark, I have everything ready to go. So once I get to this moment, I'm not freaking out. All right, so now I'm curious. I have this new canvasy material I'm gonna try. So I'm just gonna take a piece of my char cloth and I put it on the lid of my tin. And now it's about getting one spark to hit that. Ah, finally, all right. So, maybe I'll see there. One little spark hit this. You can see there's a glowing ember of circle now. So this piece of char cloth is actually growing into a coal. I'm gonna take my little tinder bundle and that piece of char cloth and gently roll it in there. No rush. And now I need some oxygen. Pull from the bottom, don't rush it. This is gonna go just fine. Some people like a wave technique. And flame. Voila, I have my birch bark. I'm gonna lay on there a little bit. Pine cone, pine cones like to burn, especially when they're sappy. Handful of sticks. 
and voila, I took flint steel, made my own char cloth, and I have made fire. Right. I wanted to show you a little bit more of what this looks like when the char cloth catches that coal on it. You can see the orange actually growing. So once that spark hits the char cloth, it will start to grow. So you have quite a bit of time depending on your size of char cloth. And then this is what I would wrap up in my tinder bundle. Put a little bit of air, and this now grows into a nice coal. That's how you get the char cloth together. Once I'm all done, it's pretty simple. I take all my materials, I put my flint and my steel, and where's my jute fiber? Ah, there it is. And I just keep these all in the kit. And I put them in my tin here, and I close this up. And I have plenty of flint steel and char cloth to make a lot of fires going forward. So nice little kit. I'd keep this totally dry. If this gets wet at all, it's done. So you got a Ziploc bag or, you know, they used to put wax on the edge to really kind of seal this whole thing off. So you'd have a nice tin that you could have your char cloth fire set. Thank you everybody for watching. This is another Guide You Outdoors video where we guide you to the outdoor lifestyle. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button and check out more of what we've been man. Remember, get outside.